Northwestern in their Gothic uniforms today with the all black gold lettering. Indiana gray and pinstripes. First pitch poured in for a strike. 91 miles an hour. Tough day for Philip Glasser yesterday. He had a 45 game reached base streak heading into yesterday that was snapped. It was tied for the longest reach base streak in Indiana uh, history since 2005. He quickly finds himself down 0-2 in this count. Middle infielders are playing just on the outfield grass, something that wouldn't fly in the major leagues. Here's the 0-2. Poked foul left side. Glasser stays alive. You see that 359 batting average next to his name. Starting incredibly well this season. And when he gets on, Indiana can certainly roll. The 0-2 again. Foul tip. Garwall a 7.52 ERA. Gives up a 4.12 batting average to lead off hitters. So getting that first out is massive for him. Another foul ball. Nice job by Glasser just to keep the hands there to foul that one away. Staying alive in the count. Center fielder Griffin Arnone shaded just slightly towards left field. They're ready if Glasser were to push this ball. 0 2 again. That one's in play and over the third baseman, Minarovic. It's a leadoff hit for Glasser. It's a good piece of hitting there. Not great contact, but just does just enough to get it over the third baseman there on the left side and bloop it into left field for the single. There's that soft line drive. Bernardo could actually come back a couple steps too after the count became 0-2. Maybe a couple steps more and he was there for that catch. But that brings Bobby Whalen to the plate. Whalen hits 277 this year and the righty swings at the first pitch. Garwell's getting up there in velocity too. That one came in at 93, as opposed to what Michael Farinelli yesterday started did, who was more of a location guy rather than velocity. Garwell picks off, but a balk is called. So Glasser is awarded second base. It looks like he may have moved towards home plate first. It's just a mental mistake there by Garwell. It was our first base umpire, Mark Hutchison, making that call. Whalen's really struggled of late. I mean, against Maryland last weekend, went one for 10 in that series with seven strikeouts. Was, went 0 for 4 yesterday with another strikeout. So, you know, definitely a guy to take advantage of at the plate. So now with a runner in scoring position, so you 0-1 is sky high, and moving up to third is Glasser. Mistakes coming in bunches here for Northwestern early. And that's something that, you know, Coach Foster and, and, and Coach Cook, who we also talked to um, a couple days ago, they were like, we have to put good at-bats together. We have to put string good baseball together just in general. 1-1 one, one is fouled away. And at least early here in the first inning, we've seen two costly mistakes that have let Glasser get on to third base. The second balk of the season for Garwal. As that ball was fouled away. It is scored as a passed ball that moved Glasser up to third. So with a one and two count runner on third, nobody out here in the top of this first. Garwal, today's Saturday starter. Finds himself in a bit of trouble. Here's the one two. Just inside. Two balls, two strikes. Once again, Menarvik, the third baseman, slightly tethering Glasser to the bag. Strike three swinging. A loud first out for Garwal and the Northwestern Wildcats.
Now the dangerous hitter, Devin Taylor, up at the plate for Indiana. And this guy, three-time Big Ten Freshman of the Week, he's been absolutely killing the ball uh, for this Indiana team. See him in right field out in the game, but first pitch is poured in. And when we talk about power, I mean, this guy's got major power. He had two home runs in the final game against Maryland last weekend, and one of them was a 479-foot bomb. So he tears the cover off the baseball. Takes a big hack at that one, finds himself down 0-2. Garble's done a good job forcing two strike counts, but it's all about finishing one. He got a strike out his last at bat, but a little bloop single to lead off the game. This is where you got to use Taylor's aggressiveness. Just took a massive cut at the, that last one. And they get him there. Two straight strikeouts for Garwal. And now Indiana needs a, a hit to bring that runner home. Brock Tibbetts will dig in, but one more look at that loud strikeout. Elevating the eyes of Taylor. Tibbetts, the first baseman, looks at the first pitch, bounces in, knocked down well by Ford. And if you're Indiana here, this is exactly the guy that you want up at the plate. He leads the team in batting average, leads the team in RBIs, and he's sixth in both of those categories in the Big Ten. Really effective hitter for this Indiana team. You mentioned the heart of this Indiana order is a tough chore to get through. S same spot on that second pitch. Slowing things down on the breaking ball, and then both of them bounce in. But something also worth noting is Philip Glasser is nearly sprinting halfway down the third baseline during Garwal's delivery. Here's the 2 out. Bell ball brings a strike. He went to the fastball there. Garwal stares down the signs from Ford and delivers the 2-1. Just missed the inside corner. It's been that kind of pitch a couple times where Garwal's trying to really hit that inside part of the plate on the right-handed hitters, and he's not gotten the call at all. Take another look at it. Definitely looked to be inside enough, but a good pitch nonetheless. 3-1 is poked to short. Jumping at it is Michael Fatrick, and he makes the catch to end the inning. So after a leadoff single, a balk and a pass ball, Northwestern leaves him stranded. And we head to the bottom of the first. One more look at the nice play by the shortstop. Are known today in center field. Carries an OPS of 821. And he check swings the first pitch, which is out of the zone. Went off speed, Manasse did, on that first pitch. one on the way from Manasse, and that's a strike. Also worth noting, we haven't mentioned it yet, but Coach Jim Foster is not here today. His daughter is graduating high school, so he's out there, so his assistant coaches will be taking over for his duties. He will be back tomorrow. Arnone gets behind in the count, one and two. Romanasse touches 88 on that fastball. Quick set, quick delivery. Didn't get the appeal of home plate umpire Don Umland. It's a good pitch by Manasse there. Just paint, trying to paint that outside and throw it right in the bottom of that corner. Two, two. Arnone stays alive. And that's what Arnone's got to do. I mean, he's got to battle in these counts. He's tied for fifth in the Big Ten in strikeouts. A little bit interesting to see him at the top of the lineup with that. Arnone works the count full. Look how close this one came to clipping that corner, but good eye by Arnone and the payoff. Arnone draws a leadoff walk. It's a fantastic at-bat there by Griffin Arnone, especially with a guy who's been struggling at the batter's box. Tied with, bats now, Tony Livermore. Arnone takes off on the first pitch, but it rides in and hits Livermore. So two on. It's 
So just like Garwal found himself with trouble in the first inning, so does Manasse. And here's Marty Kaplan. He squares up to Bunt and drops one down the third base line, but it goes foul. Kaplan, someone that the Northwestern coaching staff has really been impressed with. You know, beginning of the season limited at bats, but starting against UIC, he's been on the rise, played yesterday, one for three in that game with a walk and also had a stolen base. He's batched 300 with runners in scoring position this season, albeit a limited sample size. Here's the 0-1. Doesn't get that bunt down, a back pick for second base, and they got our known picked off. What a play from Peter Ceruto. Taking our known out. And that was something that we had heard from Jim Foster too. He said he wanted to be really aggressive on the bases. He wanted more speed in his lineup. Maybe a little bit too aggressive there as a nice snap throw comes down our note. Ball was put on a rope by Ceruto. And when your catcher can make plays like that, it really takes off some of the pressure as a pitcher. So Kaplan now faces a one and two count, just a runner on first. Manasseh can't hit that outside corner and the count's even. Two, two. One nearly became a pitch out in a way just because it missed the zone. Keeps Livermore and Tether to first. The second full count this inning. Manasseh's already up. This will be his 14th pitch. Tracks Livermore back. Just trying to keep the runner over there. He seems a little phased to start. Obviously, gave up the walk, then gave up the hit by pitch. Just trying to settle in. Another look over to first. And now here's the payoff with the runner going. But he'll have to go back with the foul ball. We mentioned Marty Kaplan being added to this lineup because he's been impressing these coaches lately. A notable omission from today's lineup is Alex Calarco, who has only missed two starts this year, which both came in March. So a long time without one of their power hitters in this order. We'll do the 3-2 again. And it's the second walk of the inning, this time drawn by Marty Kaplan. Ceruto tried to frame that, kind of bring it back into the zone, but it was too far inside, so it'll be another walk. And so this will be the first righty that Manasseh sees today. Livermore at second, Kaplan at first. Fall one. Rustich went two for four yesterday. Both those just base hits we mentioned at our open that Minarovic was the only person to have an extra base hit. One and one. With nobody on Manasse, loves to get right to work on the next pitch, but now with a lot of noise around him, he fires one that's attacked by Rustich to straightaway center. Camping underneath it is Whalen. He makes the catch. Tagging up for third is Livermore, and he's in there safely. And that's a big out there for Manasse. Runners on the corners for Tanner. First pitch tracks inside. Tanner has a heavy tendency to pull the ball towards left field. But when he gets a hold of it, it can travel out in a hurry. 1-0. He takes a strike. Ceruto is making sure both runners don't move on him. 
You see Livermore at third, Kaplan at first. Livermore was hit by a pitch. He was the second batter. Kaplan drew a walk. 1-1. One, one. Cerruto trying to frame that one again, but it was a little too far outside. Northwestern still without a hit. Two walks and a hit by pitch, as well as a fly out. Strike two. That one just clinched the bottom of the zone, as well as Arnone, who led off this game with a walk, was caught stealing. Or excuse me, he was picked off. Two, two, two outs. Cut on and missed. Nase gets out of trouble himself. And if that's going to be the way this game goes, it might just be who makes the first mistake. Six and seven hitters for Indiana. Garwal first to deliver to Carter Matheson. It's a strike. And Matheson, as we mentioned, he had all the offensive production for Indiana yesterday. Big three-run blast in the first, as well as an insurance run later on. This one he rips to first, sliding is Markinson. He beats him to the bag. A nice play by the first baseman. Great job by there, by Bennett Markinson, getting over to that ball, kind of scooping it up. It looked a little bit awkward, and having the awareness to get over to first base, to get the out. Look how hard he hits this ball. Looks like he might have gotten stuck on the glove for a second, but Markinson able to beat him over to the bag. That brings in Josh Pine playing third base. Squares up a bunt, Menarva sprints in, but a called strike anyway. Pine also one of those power hitters. One of those other Hoosiers with a BA above 300, but he's down 0-2. And even then, with the, with the batting average over 300, it's still been a down year for him. He led the Hoosiers in hits last year, sixth Indiana freshman to do so, to, or rather the sixth Indiana freshman to reach the 70 hit mark. Looks at a ball, and it, his production that guides Indiana to being one of the powerhouses of the Big Ten this year, they find themselves in second right behind Maryland after playing them a week ago. Look ahead for that Big Ten tournament, which is coming very shortly. 1-2 is inside. Looking behind Garwell, there might be some little stretching and tossing. Getting loose in the Indiana pen. If Manasseh can't go much more, he's already at 23 pitches. 2-2 two -two over here, though. Runs the count full. Good job by Pine, who was down 0-2 in this count. Payoff from Garwal. Strike three, punched him out. Right on that inside corner, the pitch that Manasse and Garwal both have not gotten so far, but on that time, Garwal gets the call. Punches out Pine. Pretty nice job there from Cooper Ford, the catcher. You mentioned Cerrito's framing job. Just pulling that one back into the home plate area. That brings Tyler Cerny, who's already looking at strike one. Cerny's second baseman, 273 average. He's down 0-2 again, so great work from Garwell so far to force two strike counts. It's all about just finishing them efficiently. And it's inc incredibly impressive given that Indiana has completely feasted on lefty starters this season. They're 10-3 against lefties. So making sure that Garwell, as he gets another strike out there to end the inning. He goes down on three straight pitches, and that takes us quickly to the bottom of the second. What, in, what a start so far. I got to say... We kind of got short-handed here after yesterday's weather as Markinson skies the first pitch foul territory and out of play. Yesterday it was just absolutely gorgeous, 70 degrees and sunny. And it's not necessarily cold today, but the overcast skies make it a bit harder to locate the baseball in the air. Just a tad, but you know, it's nice and breezy up here in the booth. 
60 degrees at first pitch today. Markinson attacks the second pitch and pokes it into right field. It gets past the right fielder, Taylor. To second base is Markinson, and he's in there with a leadoff double. How good is Bennett Markinson playing right now? Now he's on a five-game hit streak. He's reached base safely. Now the third baseman, Minarovic. He squares up to bunt. Sky's one that is touched out of place smartly by Tibbetts. Sends Markinson back to second. Markinson doesn't really run. He is one for one in his steal attempts this season, though. Narvik, as we mentioned, in the open, the only extra base hit yesterday in the 4-0 loss. He gets this bunt down, it's back to the pitcher, Manasse. The only play he can make is the first, and it's high. But Tibbetts can make the play anyway, up to third is Markinson. So a sacrifice moves him up. Coach Jim Foster loves his move up to shortstop, but he drops on this bunt, and Markinson's caught in no man's land. It's a pickle. Heading back and forth before being tracked out of the base path, but he's still not tagged, circling all the way around before finally being caught out. Maybe went too far that time, but moving up to second in all the meanwhile was McElfatrick. Markinson takes, excuse me, Michael Fatrick takes a healthy lead in second. First pitch to Cooper Ford is attacked and missed. And he started off this season pretty hot at the plate. He's tailed off since, one for four yesterday with a strikeout. The 0-1 to Ford. That one slapped into left. Does it get down? It does. That's fair. Coming home to score is McElfatrick into second is Ford. Just trading doubles this inning, and Northwestern draws first blood. Because Kraft could certainly shut things down right now. He's got a runner on second with two outs. And Drewby Pinkston, who's in the game for Griffin Arnone, who led things off with the walk, then was picked off at second by the catcher, Ceruto to not come out to play the field afterward. 0-1 to Pinkston, evens the count. Sophomore batting 154 this year. Had his first career home run a couple weeks ago against Nebraska. And he's ahead in the count. That ball trailing a little bit too far outside. Pinkston trying to keep the magic going for Northwestern here in the second. 2-1. 3-1. It's almost the same exact pitch there. Kraft looked a little frustrated after that delivery, too. Either that or he just stumbled over the mound. Here's the 3-1. Strike two, Pinkston still yet to take the bat off his shoulder, but waiting to see a quality pitch as well. He had the strikes to play with, but now it's time to protect. Payoff. That get him? It did on the arm. Here's Livermore, tacks the first pitch, roped left side foul. Almost took the helmet off the third base coach there for Northwestern on the left side. The 1 is chopped foul. Starting to refine his, his groove of late after a midseason slump. One for three yesterday, had a walk. So a strikeout, so a little bit of everything there. Two runners on, two strikes, two outs, and that ends the inning with the strikeout. 
Kraft avoids even more danger, and Northwestern only plays one. Ball one. And Jesse, after being the first Indiana hitter to hit 400 in Big Ten play last season, he's really taken a step back this year, hasn't been as effective. Power and RBIs are down. He's got more strikeouts and less walks, but you know, he's still capable at the plate. Definitely a guy at the bottom of this order that can do some damage for Indiana. Also presents some speed. You can see that match with Northwestern's defensive alignment with Menarvik preventing the drag bunt. And a strike is poured in. Two one on the way. Three balls on a strike. Just a tad high from Garwal. It's been really good with his command and location in the first two innings. And it's just trailed away from him a little bit in this at bat. Garwal fires. That one's chopped right side and through. Just gets underneath the glove of Markinson. And it's a base hit to start things in the third. Nice effort there by Markinson trying to keep that one in the infield, but either way, I think it would have been a very tough place play to get the out at first as Garwell had to scamper over to first and the speed of Jesse down the line would have probably been too much. Just holds him to one bag though as we take another look at it. Just stretching out, giving everything on that was Markinson, but just a hair too short on it. And now Ceruto tries to put a bunt down. Ceruto, the senior, transferred from Rutgers, so staying in the Big Ten. It was a big source of power when he was on the Scarlet Knights. Just one homer this year, and a 243 average. Garwal picks off the first, the ball gets away. Looked like it might have hit Jesse. And then there's some confusion over at first base. The only other time that Garwal made a pickoff move to first. There was a block called. Seems like everything's been ironed out over there. The 0 1. Cerrito gets this bunt down right back to the pitcher, and Garwal just gets it over to first. Advancing 90 feet is Hunter Jesse. And that's exactly what you want to do with that bunt, especially if Cerrito wasn't going to get on base. Just put it in the field of play, let Jesse scamper up another 90 feet to second as Indiana trying to create some runs here, create some offense. So the lineup turns over, and here's Philip Glasser, who had just a little poke single to lead off the game. First pitch is tracks outside. Glasser advanced all the way up to third. Because he moved up to second, the bot call that I aforementioned. And then the ball got away on a pass ball, which moved him up 90 feet, where he was then left stranded. That one closer to the zone, but still the ball. back the runner tracks one inside that couple Indiana bench managers have to duck out of the way of I think that one fancied Glasser's eye inside trying to pull the ball it's a little bit out in front of it throughout the first two innings Garwal has done an excellent job forcing batters to early two strike counts strike two has not been called yet in this inning and here it is now though with a foul ball I feel like you saw that one coming. I have a knack for it, what can I say? So two balls, two strikes. So the leadoff hitter, Glasser. With runners in scoring position this season, he bats 438. He's got Hunter Jesse there, but he strikes out swinging for a big second out. Went back to the off speed there, the 84 mile an hour pitch. Just getting Glasser 
just swing and miss on it. And that's something that I think that Garbo's done really well. He's changing the speeds well, and he's really confusing hitters and messing with timing. That's really all pitching is. He's done an excellent job of that through two and two-third innings now. And that strikeout also ties his season high. Four strikeouts in a game. One more and he breaks it. Bobby Whalen digs in, who's a victim of a strikeout already. And he waves at the first pitch, going breaking ball there. The only thing to keep in mind for Garwell at this point is just his pitch count, but there seems like Northwestern's letting him go however much he needs to. He checks back and just lobs the ball up to Livermore at second. No one holding the runner on, Hunter Jesse. Just want to keep tabs on him. We've mentioned the, the speed of Jesse on the base pads. Want to keep him close at second. A one, check swing, did not go. The appeal over to the first base umpire, Mark Hutchison. Other umpires today at second base, Thomas Burrell Jr. And at third, David Condon. With Don Umland calling balls and strikes. Saw another look at that check swing. This one skied left side. Tracking back is Michael Fatrick. Tanner calls him off. And he makes the play for the third out. Indiana strands yet another runner, and we head to the bottom of the third. Marty Kaplan starting things off, who walked his first time up. Break two. Expect Ryan Kraft to go quite a long way in this game. They're willing to give him at least five innings if he can handle it. One and two. Two Kaplan. Running the count even again is the designated hitter. Northwestern so far today, although they've been giving, able to get on base, leaving guys on has been quite an issue, already leaving four men on base. And that time, Kaplan's punched out. Kraft looks so confident in that at bat there, just mixing the speeds up, but also the locations. He had that, those sweeping, breaking balls across the plate, and went back. And spend made the most of them, trying to stretch that zone out. Now Rustich avoids the first. I don't think Cerruto has gotten one call when he's trying to frame all day. Still, still trying it, though. Rustich has got himself into a hitter's count. Defense playing him straight up for a guy who has plenty of power. Now he's got a true hitter's count, 3-0. See if he wants to be aggressive here if trying to draw a walk. And he just does, does just so. Four pitch walk to arguably the strongest hitter in this Northwestern lineup. About seven weeks ago. Rustich getting a good jump over at first, keeping Ceruto on his toes. But he has picked off a of runner already in this game. Strike call. Cerruto finally got the, got the strike call on that tiny frame job there as he pulled it back into the strike zone. Catchers work so hard on that framing movement that they really don't want the automatic balls and strike system is rushes just underneath that tag. I mean, that's what that's what catching is, and I guess pitching too. It's all it's all a mind game, really. I'm trying to almost fool the umpire for balls and strikes. I'm trying to get any advantage you can. Ball two. That one's definitely inside. You can't pull that <laughs> one back. Can't, can't frame side. that one after a slide. Be impressive. Though. <laughs> Rustich with a healthy lead at first. Here's the two one, well out of the zone, but poked foul by Tanner. I think his mindset there was he wanted to swing his bat, and although the 
ball was a little outside. Already made up his mind. So yeah, the first time a pitch was swung at in this inning. But I think that's part of the mentality that Northwestern's going with is Kraft throws over to first to keep the runner there. It's all about creating good good at bats. And when we talk to Coach Cook and, and Coach Foster, is we just have to put together good at bats and, and stay in, in ball games, especially against one of the best teams in the Big Ten here. Cut on and missed. Tanner goes down swinging for the second time today. Attacks the first pitch again. Such a patient hitter at the plate. That's what he's been really doing well the past couple of weeks. Seeing a little bit more game action. He's finding ways to get on base and that high on base percentages. Keeping him in this lineup. Rustich's lead has gotten a little bit smaller, but he's still getting checked back on. Rustich is five for six on steal attempts this season. An 0-1 to Markinson. Rush is playing a little bit jumpy. Sruta able to pull that one back into the strike zone too as Kraft's leaving a couple of his pitches a little bit more to the outside. Trying to get more of these hitters to chase, but as you mentioned, the patience is really there for a guy like Markinson. Here's the 0-2, and it caught the inside corner. Plenty of strikeouts for both teams today, and we head to the fourth after another branded runner on base. One more look at that one here. No doubt about that one. one nothing Northwestern still headed to the fourth. He faces Devin Taylor, who struck out quickly in his first time up, but is always a threat at this plate. I was actually watching Taylor take a couple cuts in batting practice, a couple minutes before the game and you know he's just effortless power really just smoked a ball to right field put it over the fence in warm-ups and it, it, it didn't even seem like he, he really tried at all there was one that he hit that I didn't even see land just so much power in that swing he's got a 1-1 count now 2-1 Carl went off speed there this will be his 50th pitch. Skied high, right center field. Pinkston calling for it. Both guys make it, and Rustich comes in and makes the grab for the first out. The long run for both of them. Yeah, it was kind of put into no man's land in between them, and far enough back into the outfield where you know, the second baseman couldn't get there, so kind of a good spot to, to leave, a, leave a ball, but Rustich makes the long run over from right field to snag that first out. Now the cleanup man, Brock Tibbetts, lined out to short to close the first inning. It's 0-1. Nice play by Mac Fatrick. Jim Foster loves moving him to short now. He started this year out in center field. May have found a new permanent home. And he credits the, just the good defensive attitude and the good energy that he brings over there at shortstop. 1-1. One, one. That one's crushed to left, but it looks like the park might eat it. Coming in on it is Tanner. Still coming in with the wind, and he makes the play for out number two. Just got a tad under that. I mean, off the bat, it was absolutely smoked, but didn't quite get that solid contact to drive it out to left. So two flyouts here to start the fourth inning for Northwestern. It's almost like we knew to talk about the weather when the wind was really going to be impacting these baseballs. Yeah. Ten mile per hour gusts today. And now Matheson looks at a strike. Really good movement on that pitch. Just catches that outside corner. Earl's really been impressive today. It's the location, it's the different speeds. Blows another fastball past Matheson for a strike. 
And especially if you don't have that super high velocity with your fastball, right? Guy like Garwald, 91, 92, 93. It's really important to get that movement on those breaking balls. Here's the 0-2. Tracks inside just off the hands of Matheson. Grounded out to first. After a nice play by Markinson. His first time back in the second inning. He evens the count. Still not even a single body in the Northwestern pen. Giving Garwell as much as he needs. Here's the 2-2. Cut on in, missed. The sixth strikeout of the day. A new season high for Sam Garwall. Here's Minarovic. Behind him will be Michael Patrick and Ford, who really got the run produced for Northwestern today. First pitch is at eye level. Minarovic as a leadoff hitter. Gets on about one every three times. He's got a 1-1 one, one count. Make that one and two. The sun now fully shining down on Coldike Field here at Rocky and Bernice Miller Park. People are outside having a good day. Feels like baseball. One, two. It's a really good pitcher's pitch there, trying to catch that upper outside corner of the plate, just off the plate, a little high too. Definitely had to make Menarvik think about it. Full count now. We mentioned how these pitchers are really getting quick to work with nobody on base. There is a pitch clock here in college baseball, but it's really all up to the second base umpire to shout something out. Payoff pitch is skied high, shallow right side. Tracking back is Cerny, the second baseman, and he puts the squeeze on. Cerruto bringing that one back into the Strike zone, gets the call for his pitcher. Couldn't get that one though, and the count's even. Yeah, Kraft just trying to paint that outside half of the plate so far in this at bat. 1-1 one, one on the way from Kraft. Chopper on the ground to second, Cerny on a couple bounces. Over to first, second out. Kraft's done a very good job settling this game down after you know, Manasse. And he attacks that first pitch into right field. That's a base hit. He's two for two today. Nice approach there. Saw the pitch, wanted the pitch, and then just goes the other way, keeping the hands back. Did not lead off this game as Griffin Arnone was in the starting lineup. Great movement on that breaking ball by Kraft. Started it inside and just curled back into that inner part of the plate. Check swing. He went around. I think it would have been really, a strike At least anyway. it was a strike anyway. But that was the first time that he thought about going after one. He had a full count in front of him before getting hit by pitch. Here's the 0-2 inside. It's getting a lot of break on that breaking ball. That one off the release almost looked like it was going to go hit Pinkston and just had the, the slice on it to get back inside. Ford leads off at first, the two outs. High chopper first base side. Grabbed by Tibbetts, and it's a race to the bag with the head first slide, but Pinkston is just a hair too late. And that ends things in the home half of the fourth. Six, seven, eight hitters for Indiana here. Leading things off is Josh Pine. Struck out earlier. First pitch swinging right at McElfatrick, his second grab on a line drive today. It's been really solid defensively today with those two big catches off the, off the bat. But if you're Josh Pine there, that's still a really good swing. You can't be upset about that. Just put it right at the shortstop. Wonder what the expected batting average would be on something like that. But good positioning, good snag, and one out right, 
very early. Cerny squares up to bunt, but a called strike. Nice job there by Garwal, painting that outside half. Gets the call. Fires in the 0-1, and it tracks outside. A little bit more stretching happening in Northwestern bullpen. We're monitoring it very closely. And the 1-1 one -one is fouled away. Good job by Garwalk going back inside there. Cerny had to try and fight that one off as it was in on the hand, so an uncomfortable battle for him there on the inside part of the plate. Curious to see if Garwalk goes back outside here. The ball and two strikes to Cerny. Off with the hands of the bat there. Yeah, and it's tough. I mean, on that inside part of the plate, it's very tough for Cerny to come around and make a really good swing at it. All he can do is just foul it back. Especially the way he stands pretty close to the plate. Here's the one-two again. Caught the upper outside corner for out number two of Cerny. So here's Hunter Jesse, who has a hit today, but he's robbed again. Mackel Fatrick taking away hits from several Hoosiers and ends things here in the visitors half of the fifth. Excited for today's one run game so far between the Northwestern Wildcats and the Indiana Hoosiers. Livermore drops a bunt, it hits his bat twice. It'll be a foul ball. Yeah, he looked like he had a good jump there too. Very unlikely occurrence there. Livermore, the Chicago native, of course. Trying to make some magic happen after being hit by a pitch early and then striking out last time up. That one's chopped up the middle. Will it get through? It does. Base hit for Livermore. And the leadoff man is aboard in the bottom of the fifth. But any way to get on, he's tracked back to first. He's got two stolen bases on the air, so he's a small threat to steal. Kraft just want to keep him on the bag. Kraft is very attentive to any runners that he's had to deal with on base. And so is Ceruto, who tries to back pick again, but Kaplan was hitting in the way. Kaplan walked and struck out. Another pickoff. We, we mentioned that Jim Foster told us he wants to be aggressive on the bases. When he was at Army, he said he was used to stealing 130 bags a year. Northwestern severely lacking the stolen base department, but Indiana must have heard that. And especially when your hitters aren't necessarily having the best statistical seasons, it's all about creating offense. And being aggressive on the base paths does that. So and that's part of the reason Northwestern's really struggled this year. Obviously, not just in the Big Ten, but overall, if you look at the record, it's been a lack of offensive production. At least part of the story has been a lack of offensive production. And a lack of base stealing has definitely been something that Northwestern wants to work on in, in future recruiting classes and, and kind of become a point of emphasis for this team moving forward. Got to find a way to bounce back. Northwestern finds themselves at the bottom of the Big Ten, 3 and 13 in conference. Looking back, tracking Livermore back again. But Indiana, second place in the Big Ten, 10 and 6 in conference record, trailing only the Maryland Terrapins, who are currently riding a 10-game win streak. One and two to Kaplan. Cut on and missed. Second time he's gone down on strikes today. Chopped the first one foul, left side. Had a fly out to center as well as a walk on four pitches. Five home runs this year. Keeping Livermore tethered to that bag. You mentioned that speed he has. If you can't even get a good lead off, you're not going to be able to score on a double. We've seen more balls thrown over to first check on the runner than we've seen pitches. Keeping Livermore on his toes. 
Hoosiers are doing everything they can to not let them take even another step. One on one count though to Rustich, if we'll see another one. Fouls it away. And these are the situations where Steven Rustich has had such a better year this year. Something I asked Coach Foster about was the, the dip in strikeouts, really, for Rustich. And it's been part of this hard headed mentality that Coach Foster has preached and the entire coaching staff of Northwestern. Something that players have really bought into is especially Steven Rustich. And you'll see here, likes to kind of choke up on the bat with two strikes. Just a couple inches to get a little bit more control of that bat. Could all of these pickoff moves be disrupting the timing of a hitter? A little bit sometimes is, you know, when you get up to the, to the plate you're expecting, you know, to see a couple pitches in a row and sometimes you don't know if the pitch is coming or if it's not or kind of messes up with that timing. And, but at the same time, it also messes up with the pitcher's timing too because they have to focus on something else. So. 2-2, two, two. sky foul. Really quality at bat here. Rustich fighting to stay alive. Two balls, two strikes, one out. Livermore leads off at first. Northwestern leading by a run and another check back. And it's not like Livermore's taking a, a lead that's worth him getting picked off. They're just making sure that he knows not to move, go anywhere. This one's in play, right side. Skied back towards his Taylor, and he makes it a couple steps away from the track. And going back to first is Livermore. Luke Tanner now. 0 for 2 today, both with strikeout swinging. His first pitch is lifted right side. Taylor tracking in. Will he get there? Diving play, but he bounces off him in fair ground. Coming all the way around to third and held up is Livermore before breaking a late break to the plate, and he's in to score. Over to third with the slide is Tanner, and he's in there. And what a play there as Devin Taylor unable to make the catch. Ball bounces past him and the Northwestern runners take advantage. And that's exactly what you have to do if you're not having success at the plate. So it goes down as a double with an error on the throw. So the run by Livermore is unearned against Kraft. This one's chopped by Markinson to third. Pine over to first in time for the third out. Run does not count. So they lead 2 nothing with the 9-1 two batters for Indiana. Ceruto starts things by looking at a strike. Sam Garwal still out there for his sixth inning of work. Now his longest outing of his season. This is the last batter in the order for Indiana. So as Garwell prepares himself to go through the top of the Indiana lineup third time round, throwing those first pitch strikes are super important. That one's lifted to right center. Hooking back is Rustich, and he makes the play on the run. Great read off the bat by Steven Rustich to catch that one. And I mean, great contact by Peter Ceruto, driving that ball out to right center, but just had that little bit of that tailing action and allowed Rustich to get over there and make the out. Ceruto is a real source of power on this Indiana team, going back to his days as uh, a member of Rutgers. But a really nice track, as you mentioned, from Rustich, reading that one all the way through. Lineup turns over again. Here's Glasser. One for two today, started this game with a knock. And looks at a strike on the outside corner. Good breaking ball, catches the outside half. It's really awesome to see Garwal still have that stuff and still have that movement this deep into his outing. The 70th pitch from Garwal is poked into left in a sliding play by Luke Tanner for out number two. So how about that? The corner outfielders making big plays defensively to keep Indiana 
off the base paths. That time a sliding catch in left center. See another angle of that one. And Glasser's really struggled in these past two days. They're making really solid contact. It's just the defense of Northwestern has been really strong. Michael Fatrick at short. We've seen the corner outfielder shine now. This one's ripped, and this one gets through. Bobby Whalen gets on, bringing Tevin Taylor up to the plate. Two outs here in the sixth. Hard grounder just out of reach of Livermore, the second baseman. And now a needed out here for Northwestern. Tying run at the plate. Ball one to Taylor. Taylor had a 32 game reach base streak that was broken in the series against Maryland. It was the longest streak by an Indiana freshman since 2005. So it's just kind of the special season he's had for the Hoosiers. He's got a one and one count now. Still no formal warm ups happening in the Northwestern pen. A lot of standing around and talking. Garwals look great so far. This one's lifted to short. Michael Fatrick on a hop over to first. Beats it by a step and that ends the visitors part of the sixth inning. Really good work so far from Sam Garwal. Absolutely. And getting some help from his defense too as the corner outfielder's making plays. That time another nice throw by Michael Fatrick over to first. And it'll be a Northwestern 2-0 lead heading into the bottom of the sixth. It's very important to snag the wins together. Narvik looks at a strike. He's got a 1-1 one, one count. 0 for 1 today with a sack bunt as well as a pop out. Fanned on that one. Kraft going through three and a third so far, taking over for Teddy Manasse. That one gets away from him. Just a weird delivery there. Couldn't quite do exactly what he wanted and just got away from him. Kevin Menarvik is starting to become a part of a Northwestern family too as he got a 2-2 fouled away. His younger sister's coming here to play softball next year. Big things for the Menarvik family. Anything to shout out a fellow Texan. Here's the 2-2. Good take by Menarvik out in the outside corner. Runs the count full. That pitch was really close. Really nice job by Kraft putting one there. Giving him an opportunity. Payoff from Kraft. Lifted in the air, shallow center coming in as Whalen Makes a diving play to get there in time and retire the leadoff man. How about some of the defense we've seen in the past inning and a half? First Northwestern at the corner outfield. was Waylon, but he's good to go now. Here's Michael Fatrick. Cerruto's really not gonna stop trying to frame. It's part of the, you know, the, the catcher mentality of helping the pitcher out. Michael Fatrick, get, Michael Fatrick, excuse me, ahead 2-0 in this count. So Kraft starting to climb in pitch count as well. He's thrown now 64 pitches. This one sharply on the ground. Cerny sliding over, makes the play, and there's two gone. It's a tough play by Cerny there. Made it look easy, keeping the ball in front of him. Double down the left field ride. Double down the left field line, and a single down the right field line. This one's put right back up the middle. Falling down and grabbing it is Kraft. Flips it over to first, and a quick inning of work for the Hoosiers. Ends things here in the sixth. First pitch to Tibbetts is a strike. Tibbetts, Matheson, and Pine today combined 0 for 6. You add Taylor's 0 for 3 in there, who bats right before that. And Cerny after that 0 for 2. The only hits that are really coming through are from the top and the bottom of this Indiana lineup. Garwell's done a really good job managing these dangerous Indiana hitters. 
Sharply hit foul to the Northwestern dugout. Bounces around the net and the fence. Tibbetts a little out in front of that one. That's something that Garble's done all day, though. He's been mixing the speeds to mess with the hitter's timing. And it's been working. Let's see what he does on a one and two. Fastball fouled away. Be interesting to see if he goes back to the breaking ball here inside, something that he's done all day long. Still has the advantage in this at bat with a one and two count. Delivery from the southpaw. Sharply hit left field, tracking back is Tanner, and he makes the play, crashing into the wall. To keep that ball in the glove. You mentioned this field is entirely turf. The warning track isn't as easy to feel as the first pitch that Matheson misses. The defense has come up huge here in the past inning and a half for Northwestern. As there's been a little bit of a better contact for, from these Indiana hitters. We saw last inning with the big plays in left and right. And this time, first out of the inning is a very loud out to left. Matheson today, ground out and a strikeout. And that one got him on the arm. So he gets on base yet again, making that another game to add to his streak. And that moves Josh Pine to the box. Pine also today 0 for 2 with a strikeout and a line out. One of the victims of Michael Fatrick's defense. First pitch is right down the pipe. Nice movement on that breaking ball, though. There is now some warm-up in Northwestern's bullpen. This, will, this could be Garwal's last inning. He's at 84 pitches now. He's ahead 0-2, though. Still... Very efficient in working a two-strike count. Pine stares him down with the runner at first. Just missed low. That's a good pitch there by Garwal. Keeping it low in the zone. If Pine decides to chase it, create a ground ball situation. One more look. Right on the border there. Look back at the runner on first. Matheson is back safely. He's two for four on steals this season. That one's roped in the left. That's a base hit. Around second, coming to third is Matheson before being tracked back after the throw comes back in. Tanner, two on with one out. Tanner was a tad lackadaisical and left getting over to that ball and allowed for the lead runner to kind of take a massive turnaround second, but got the throw in quick enough to hold him at second. So now it'll be two on, one out. Here is, looks like we'll get a little bit of a conversation here on the mound. Two runners on, one out. First pitch gets away. Both runners move up. Not the way you want to start with a wild pitch. Yeah, only adding pressure to the pressure cooker here as Northwestern trying to hang on to this two-run lead, but those runners will advance 90 feet. And Cerny now in a big spot. He was in a big spot before, but. It takes away a double play, too. Massive shift. Cerny lifts this ball into right center field. Coming in is Rustich, but making the play at is the second baseman Livermore, and he gets the ball in quickly. Very smart, very quick play by Livermore, who is tracking backwards, fires it into Markinson, and keeps the runners tied to their bases. And both Ford and Markinson telling Kobe Moda, keep it going, as get that first out. 
a needed second out. Now Indiana will need a hit to play at least one. Can't rely on a sack fly anymore. Now Hunter Jesse, who's one for two today, is going to look to deliver. A little bit of dancing down the third base line goes Matheson. He's not being held to the base. And the catcher Ford's trying to walk him back a little bit. One oh from Mo. Just missed the zone. Two really close close pitches there by Mo. He's got so much movement on that breaking ball in that time. On something a little bit more speedy. Two very close misses. Had to make Jesse think about it. Mo delivers. Fouled away. Matheson at second, Pine at first. Er, excuse me, Matheson at third, Pine at second. Jesse at the plate. 2 1. Strike two. Started outside, came back to find that, just that outside corner. Now knocks it all up at 2 2. 2 1, two strikes, two balls, two out. Cut on and miss. Mo gets out of it. He's fired up. And it's stretch time here in Evanston. Mo comes in. Move the base runners from first and second to second and third and then gets the two outs to end it. It's Pinkston now up to bat. Pinkston so far 0 for 1. Just hit by a pitch and a ground out. Came in as a substitution in the second inning. Northwestern looks to capitalize after Kobe Mo came in and delivered when they needed him, getting Northwestern out of a jam. It looked scary at first as the first pitch he fired in was wild. Moving first and second with one out to second and third with one out. And Pinkston's behind one and two. Fouled away. And we expected to see this from Kraft after coming in to replace Manasseh, but he's done a very good job in quite a bit of innings of work. Really kept this game close for Indiana with the bats not really being in effect as Pinkston chases that one way outside. He'll go down swinging. There's Livermore, second baseman. Swings at the first pitch, shallow center field. That ball is caught. Another diving play by Bobby Whalen. Denies Northwestern of yet another hit. Indiana trying to say, whatever you guys can do, I can do better. As we saw Northwestern with a couple huge defensive plays in the middle innings. And now, Bobby Whalen coming alive in center field, taking base hits off the board for Northwestern. That time moving to his right, away from his glove side, having to make a backhanded grab. Really nice work. And that brings Kaplan to the plate. He's 0 for 2 with a walk and two strikeouts. First pitch on the inside corner. Quickly to the 0-1, slapped towards second, Cerny off of a slow roller. A little bit of an errant throw, but making the play at first is Tibbetts to retire the side. 9-1 and two batters for the Hoosiers. Here's Peter Ceruto. Off speed, strike one. Great movement. Started it out, uh, started inside rather than trailed back. Found that inside corner, full Ceruto.
Strike two. This is also, as these Indiana uh, batters are seeing Mo today, this is the first time today they're seeing a right-handed pitcher after a very lengthy and quality start from Sam Garwal. Here's the 0-2 from Mo. Right back up the middle, out of the reach of Mo. But Livermore is there to fire it first. As you mentioned, that lineup turning over. Mo's first pitch is waved and missed. They got away from Ford there, but no harm done as no one was on base. Had so much movement, it missed the bat of Glasser, missed the glove of Ford, and scampered on by to the backstop. Mo continues to pour in strikes, but that one just gets out of reach of Markinson. And it's a base hit for Glasser, who almost ran into Mo as he was trying to round first base. Before he can fire a pitch, he checks back on the runner. That's Philip Glasser on first, who chased Mo with the single. Chopper above the pitcher's glove. Only play is Livermore at first in a nice scoop. At first from Markinson, and Indiana want to go, wants to go straight to a review. They think Markinson came off the back. If that were to stand, that would be a fantastic play by Bennett Markinson. Good job by Tony Livermore as you get another angle here to crash in on this ball and really come at it with full speed. The throw a little bit errant, and it looked like Markinson may have been off the bag when he scooped it. But even then, a good play by Markinson to, to keep that one in the glove because that easily could have gotten by. Grable to Taylor, first pitch. Just missed. Taylor today 0 for 3. He's gotten out in just about every form you could think of. Grable taking his time. Obviously with a runner at second, big spot in this game. Good pitch, but not good enough for the appeal of Don Umlin. Just a tad inside. Ford maybe tried to bring that up a little too much. But still a 2-0 count. That one slapped into left. Outfield was playing deep, but it still gets past Tanner. Coming home to score is Glasser. Ball still not in yet, and Taylor is easily into second with a double. And now it's a one-run game. And with that double to left, Devin Taylor ties Kyle Schorber's 47 RBIs as a freshman for Indiana. So, you know. He turned out pretty good. Yeah, it turned out pretty good, obviously. 46 homers with the Phillies last year to lead the National League. And, you know, Taylor's been hitting bombs all season long. So, follow that track, and Taylor could work out pretty well. Schorber's also got a ring on his trophy case, so. Very true. Maybe that could be in the future for Taylor, but still. They got to get out of this eighth inning. Tibbetts is up now in the cleanup spot. First run of the day for Indiana comes with two outs in the eighth. Grable taking a long look at Taylor. These guys one foul and out of play. Tibbets in the first inning had a lineup that was a leaping grab by McElfatrick. Or two flyouts to left. This one skied shallow left coming in is Tanner, but he can't get there in time. The throw home is cut off, and Indiana has tied it here in the eighth. Good job by Ben Grable to cut that throw off because if he lets that one go to home, then Tibbetts moves up to second base and you have the same thing again as it looked like Taylor was going to score. He had a good jump off second, had the speed to get home. Throw would not have caught him. 
Through seven and two thirds, Northwestern looked unstoppable, but two just pokes into left. Tie this game, and we are level. This is to Matheson on the first pitch. Ball two. Grable's thrown five balls, four strikes so far today. Got someone else stretching in the pen, too, if Grable continues to struggle. Still only three strikes away from getting out of the inning, or, you know, fly ball or ground out or something like that. Being behind on the count against Carter Matheson is definitely not an ideal situation if you're Grable. Not at all, and here's the 2-0. Foul ball. <laughs> Moving up to second is Tibbetts. Is there a balk there? And there must have been. Don't know exactly what that call was. So take that foul ball off the board. Maybe it was a... It's Matheson now trots over to first, so... Giving the intentional pass, looks like. And this one slapped into right backwards is Rustich, and he makes the catch one step away from the track, which ends things in the eighth. And you'll see Rustich hit that helmet, that hard-headed mentality that we brought up earlier that he's really helped buy into. Chopper back to the mound. Kraft over to first. Kraft just looks cool, calm, and collected. And He's done enough to keep Indiana in this game. Obviously, they were trailing down 2-0 Northwestern. Opportunity there in the eighth. Luke Tanner, who doubled his last time up, looks at a ball. This one's lifted. Foul ground right side, but in play for Tibbetts for out number two. First pitch to Tyler Cerny is a strike. 0 for 3 today. Defense playing him straight up. One and one the count. Cerny trying to get things started here for the Hoosiers in the top of the ninth after Indiana put up two in the top of the eighth to tie this ball game. Wave and a miss. Two strikeouts and a pop out for Tyler Cerny. But he's had a great day on the defensive end of things, especially in that very quick bottom of the eighth over at second base. Strong take. Just a little too much zing on that one is kind of trailed outside and low. Two, two. Just missed. Counts now full for Grable. And he got the strikeout. What a way to come back after the tough top of the eighth. Jesse takes a ball. Jesse. 
Chopper to second. Livermore, easy enough to toss to Markinson. Two dead. And now Peter Ceruto up, and if you remember last time out, or not last time out, but the time before, had that strongly well-hit ball to right center that Rustich was able to track down, so he's definitely got the power in his swing. Grable will try and finish him off and get Northwestern to the bottom of the ninth. An opportunity to walk things off. Ceruto behind in the count, 0-1 already. Grable looking much more comfortable out there in this ninth. I think it's the lack of base runners is definitely helpful. So it doesn't have any of that outside distraction. He's still throwing an even split just about between balls and strikes. Compared to Ryan Kraft, his counterpart right now, who's thrown twice as many strikes as balls. Ceruto 0 for 2 today. Sack bunt. That line out you mentioned as well as they ground at the second. And he calls time. Just trying to gather himself, stay composed in this big at bat down the stretch. Tied at two, top of the ninth with two outs. That one's lifted right side. Will it stay in play? Rustich nearing the wall. He crashes into the fence and it drops into the bullpen. Yeah, I don't think he was fully aware of the fence down there. So ran out of real estate. It's tracking to that right side. So Ceruto will do it again. The one-two count. Lead off then. Top of the order right behind him, Philip Glasser on deck. One ball, two strikes. On the way. Missed that set. Just a tad outside. Looked for a sec that he got it, but just off the plate. Full count. And 95 after, on that. And after being down one, two in the count, Cerritos worked it back to full. Trying to put in this quality at bat to create some offense here with two outs. Payoff pitch. Cut on and missed. Grable delivers when it's needed the most. And we head to the bottom of the ninth inning. Minarovic, McElfatrick, and Ford do up for Northwestern. Do they have the magic in them? We'll find out when we return on Big Ten Plus. A month ago, almost to the day, Ford delivered a two-run single. He's in the hold now as Minarvik takes or swings at a strike. He lifts this one to straightaway center field. Easy enough for Whalen, who makes the catch for out number one. Had a great day on defense. Can he do it with his bat now? Owen McElfatrick's 0 for 3 today with two ground outs and a fielder's choice. He did come around to score, though, on that fielder's choice back in the second inning. 1 and 1. Ryan Kraft has gone marathon mode today. Coming out of the bullpen and now as, ooh, great catch out there in right field, robbing McElfatrick of a hit. May have stretched the body of Devin Taylor a little bit too far, and I was, I was trying to say, and a triple with one out with Ford at the plate spells disaster for the Hoosiers. But that's an alternate universe now as Ford fouls off the first one. Looked like he wasn't sure if he wanted to swing at it or not, and just fouls it back. Almost like a half swing. Very slow chopper, first base line. Kraft missed the ball, trying to make a great tag. So a runner on with the top of the order for Northwestern. So everyone's in a new spot. 
Tenth inning is underway with a ball to the top of the order, Philip Glaser. Philip Glasser. Glasser, after a struggle yesterday, is two for four, two singles, came around to score last time up. On the ground to second, Livermore on a spin, over to first, one gone. How about that defensive play from Tony Livermore? Tracking over to his left, spinning around and firing it on to Markinson at first to make the out. Nice play as you get another angle of it there. A little pirouette action from the second baseman. Everyone's been shining on defense today. Only one error, and that came from Devin Taylor. Northwestern was able to play to run back in the fifth. Bobby Whalen now looks at a ball. He's one for four. Minarvik hit coming in the sixth. Minarvik coming in on third base just in case Whalen decides to drop down a bunt. Takes a big hack and misses at it. One and one. Extra innings here in Evanston. Northwestern scored in the second and fifth before Indiana came in clutch in the eighth inning, plating two. Another big swing and a miss. Grable just powering the fastball by Whalen there. That was 93 mile an hour. Two here. On the way from Grable. Poke foul. It's a little low. And Whalen had to kind of reach out to poke that one just foul. Good job there by Grable attacking that outer half of the plate there, trying to get that weak contact and some of that ground ball action as he drives it there. Another ball to Livermore. He guns it over to first again for the second out. Seems like wherever Livermore is, the ball is going right to him. He's a magnet. Time a little bit more towards second base. Easy enough for him. And now Devin Taylor with nobody on. One for four today. Had an RBI double back in the eighth to even earn this opportunity at another at bat in the tenth. Mentioned tying Kyle Schwarber's RBI freshman record. Freshman total. Freshman total, excuse me. But nonetheless, still very impressive. It's still Kyle Schwarber anyway. He's ahead 2-0 here. Scribbles pitching around him, it looks like. Is now at 3-0. And it's understandable with a guy like Taylor and the amount of power he possesses. 13 home runs leads this Indiana team in that category. Definitely change the look of a game with one swing of the bat. Put him something over the plate, and he lifted it foul and way out of play. Three balls and a strike with two outs. Top 10. Chopper right side and foul. Count is full. Was a 3-0 count to Taylor. Northwestern looking to bring the bats back. Have to wait another pitch. Taylor doing a good job just staying alive, fouling that pitch off. Count remains 3-2. Grable a strike away from putting it to the home half of the 10th. That one bounces through, sprinting down to first is Taylor, seeing if he could take advantage. But he's aboard with a walk. So with Taylor on, Tibbetts coming up. 
No change in pitching personnel. No formal warm-ups happening in the Northwestern pen. Grable's gone two and a third so far. And remember, Tibbetts, single in the eighth, brought around the tying runner, who was Taylor at that time. Had also some help from a missed play out in left field. Tanner came in but overran the ball. But 0-1-1, two Tibbets. Up and in, misses. Went off speed there. Interesting to see him go highs. The base runner on and trying to extend this game. Those high pitches might be a little dangerous, especially with a guy like Tibbetts who can really power a ball. Wind is starting to pick up a little bit more. Although the weather, the temperature has gotten higher, it feels colder it because does, it's gotten a bit gustier. It does feel colder. And the sun's out, though, which is nice. And not gray sky anymore, either. Ripped down the third base line and fair. Pass Minarovic, rounding second, coming to third is Taylor. They're going to wave him home. He stumbles on his way to the plate. He still hasn't gotten up on his way in. And he's tagged out. The most unfortunate of circumstances take away the go-ahead run for Indiana, and that ends the top of the 10th. And Indiana's mistakes continue to hurt them. First, it was Devin Taylor with the glove out in right field, let Northwestern score a run a couple innings ago, but this time, you know, as the ball is absolutely driven to left field, and Taylor tries to come around third, stumbles halfway home, as you see there, and then he's in no man's land, it's forced to go home, and is tagged out at the plate. What an unfortunate series of events for the Hoosiers as it's still square. 2-2 two -two here heading into the bottom of the 10th. Who has been kind of filling in their role as a closer. Foley, last appearance, April 30th against Maryland. Pitched two-thirds innings, gave up two runs and three walks. Doesn't strike out a ton of batters and gives up the walks from time to time. So something to watch for here. He's also prone to giving up the long ball as Northwestern. trying to find a run here to walk things off in the 10th. Went 94 and 93 on a pair of fastballs, but both missed the zone high and low. Pours in a strike to Livermore, it's two and one. Looking at the on-deck circle, Calarco is ready to come in, taking over for where Marty Kaplan has been hitting in the DH slot. Here's the 2-0, 2-1, excuse me. Make that three and one. Livermore. Hit by a pitch, struck out swinging, singled, and then a fly out. Could go down as a line out. Either way, he's got a full count now. Three balls, two strikes, bottom of the 10th. Livermore draws a walk. That's exactly what Northwestern needed, a base runner here to open up the bottom of the 10th, get someone on. Indiana dugout very quiet. The Northwestern one, a lot of clapping, a lot of cheering. Trying to provide the energy. The runner on, no outs here. Larko watches the ball sail by him. Connor Foley, an ERA of 4.96. Works really well with runners on, though, and sub 100 batting average against with runners on. Larko fouls one back, shakes a little bit of debris off the net behind him. Kalarka, the switch hitter batting left. 1-1, one, one, fouls it back. This is where Kalarko struggled yesterday in those two straight counts. Obviously, there's three Ks, so. Needs to be smart here at the dish. 
Livermore leading off at first after drawing a leadoff walk. Track back. Clark are two home runs this season, 24 RBIs. The 25th would seal a win for this team. The one, two. Chopper to third, foul ball. Yeah. May have saved him there. Just, just foul, but even then, I don't think Northwestern would have minded that given that the runner would have moved up 90 feet. Single scores. The run, Livermore's got the speed, but nonetheless. Clarko will get another opportunity. A lot of energy coming from Northwestern side. One, two again. Foul tipped away. Clarko staying alive. Just does enough. Looked like Foley had him beat. Clarko sticks out the, the bat, gets a piece of it, and will still be one, two. I mentioned Livermore has the speed. But he's under 50% in stolen bases. He's two for five. He's looked back again by Foley. Indiana's been keeping tabs on him all afternoon. We saw it with Kraft. They checked on every runner. Yeah. Been more pickoff moves than pitches during each at bat. One, two. Inside. Got away from Ceruto. Couldn't locate it enough, but neither could Livermore to move up to second. It's interesting because Cerruto set up outside almost as if Livermore was going to try and steal and then he would have had an easy throw over to second base. But that ball came all the way in and it was kind of a tough play for Cerruto to snag it. Great way to knock it down though, prevent that from getting past him. Another foul ball. Calarco working the count, trying to create another quality at bat. Is you know something that he struggled with yesterday. The seventh pitch of this at bat, and a two-two count with nobody out in the bottom of the tenth. On the way, check swing, didn't go. Full count. Thought about it, but said no. Runs the count full. So after being down one-two, it's now three-two. Northwestern trying desperately to create some offense here. Me. That was pitch number eight. This will be pitch number nine of this at bat. And another look back on the runner. Livermore back safely. Payoff pitch. Up the middle. Fielded by Cerny over to first. The double play. Just weak contact right up the middle, exactly what Foley wants. And so wipe that leadoff walk off. Wipe the nine pitch at bat away. Here's Rushich with nobody on and two gone and strike one already signaled. And that swing was a I want to end this ball game kind of swing. Just completely came out of his shoes and trying to attack that baseball. The left fielder Hunter Jesse's playing very deep against him. Larco, excuse, excuse me, Rustich, when he gets a hold of one, Normally the left field, and it's deep, but it's already 0-2. Ball one. Fully tried stretching the zone there, lost a little bit on it. One and two, fouled away. Weirdly enough, against Connor Foley, batters more likely to get a hit with two outs than there are with runners on. It's just the weird game of baseball statistics. Get those random things all the time. Rustich trying to keep this inning alive, though. That went a little bit wild as well, and it's two and two. A strike sends us into the 11th inning. Swing hard enough. We'll end it here in the 10th. 2-2. Two -two. That one's lifted. Shallow center field, and it's down for a base hit. Inning stays alive as Rushditz gets aboard with a two-out single. Good at-bat there by Rustich. Staying alive in the at-bat as we talked about, and then just 
putting that one into shallow center as Whalen was deep enough. There was space out there for that ball to drop, and Rustich will be on first. Bennett Markinson. And shockingly enough, Indiana tries to pick him off. It's just been that was clearly the scouting report. Clearly, clearly Indiana was listening to uh, our, our private exactly. meeting with <laughs> Coach Foster. That's what I'm Foster. saying. And Coach Foster was like, "We got to be aggressive on the base paths." Indiana clearly picked up on that. <laughs> they have been very active in keeping that runner at first all afternoon. No balls and a strike to Luke Tanner. That went over his head. Still a lot of energy from the Northwestern bench. Cheering Tanner on as another throw over to first to keep tabs on Rustich. I mean, it really does feel like there's more pickoff attempts than. Runners going, didn't get the best jump, but the throw is high and Rustich is into second safely. Trying to make that deal worth something. Tanner strikes out for the third time today, and we head to the 11th. Carter Matheson leads things off for the Hoosiers. Strike one. Matheson today ground out in a strikeout, as well as being hit by a pitch, and was intentionally walked. So 0 for 2, even though this is his fifth plate appearance. That one drops in for a ball. The count's even at one. Once again, top of the 11th here on Big Ten Plus, Eli Burke and Adam Beck. Excited to bring you what has been a great game. Strike two is called against Matheson. Just catches that outside half of the plate. Really good movement there. Get that second strike. It's Matheson, still without a hit, has reached base on the intentional walk and the hit by pitch. That one skied left side. Very playable for Ferrer. He camps underneath it and makes the play. One out. Brings Josh Pine to the plate. Third baseman is one for four today. With his hit coming in the seventh. Seems like forever ago now. Grable's now thrown three full innings in relief. He's got a one-on-one -on -one count against Pine. And he's really, he's really settled in after, you know, that eighth inning where Indiana was able to put those two runs up. But since then, it's been much more calm, much more cool, and much more collected from Grable. The one-one. Foul back. One ball, two strikes, it's Josh Pine here in inning number 11. Just missed the corner. It's a good pitch though. Just tracking outside, just a tad too far off the plate, but definitely made Pine think about it. Two two is fouled again. for Grable, misses the zone. Now counts full. Grable trying to keep running through these Indiana batters, but Pine's putting up a fight here with this at bat. Payoff pitch. 
Another foul ball. Indiana dugout coming alive a little bit, trying to cheer Pine on. They've been quiet for most of the day. Northwestern's definitely been more animated. Also a couple pitchers warming up in the Northwestern pen as that one's lifted foul. The field is in front of you, Mr. Pine, is surely what he's saying in his head. Just can't straighten it out, but he's doing a great job staying alive. Every pitch matters so much right now. We'll now face the ninth pitch of this at bat. Another foul. Let's get some batting practice in. Long at bat here. Just trying to stay alive and wait for his pitch and not Grable's pitch. Be interesting to see what Grable goes to here. If try and continue with some off speed stuff. Full pine or just try and power a fastball by him. Struck him out. A fastball it is, 94 mile an hour, the top of the zone, and Pine swings right through it. Back in the seventh and striking out in the ninth. Ball one. Hunter Jesse's on deck behind him. Bottom of the order now coming up for both these teams in this 11th inning. Lifted right side, foul ground, and not a play. We, we should have been keeping tally how many foul balls Indiana's hit versus how many pickoff moves they've made. But it, it would have been close. It would have definitely been a close play. But Grable's got some stills. He stills the velocity here, and a lot of these Indian, in, Indiana batters, excuse me, were a little late on these pitches. So that's why we're getting a lot of foul balls to the right side these right-handed batters. It, it, impressive with the, this velocity, he's still touching 94 on his fastball. This is now the new career long in terms of outing for Grable, who's looking at another foul ball that was caught up in the netting before this game even started. And another strikeout ends things in the top of the 11th. Good work from Grable. He's gone three and two thirds, and Northwestern with another chance to walk this game off in the bottom of the 11th. One more look at Grable's work. Fist pump after he walks out a shot. Six, seven, eight batters for Northwestern when we come back. They're going against Connor Foley in his second inning. Markinson waves at the first pitch. This is probably who you want at the dish to lead off the inning if you're Northwestern. Coming into this game with the second highest on base percentage on this team out of you know regular players. Strike two. But down in the count 0 2 quickly. So he's going to have the work cut out for him. Markinson chops one. Trying to beat out the throw. Cerny over to first in time. Narvik, the third baseman, looks at a ball. 0 for 3 today. Sack, bunt, pop out, line out, fly out. What does his fifth plate appearance have in store other than a foul ball? And if you're Northwestern and you can somehow get to Cooper Ford in the nine hole. He's three for four today. Just get one on. That ball a little up and in. Two balls and a strike to Minarovic. Minarovic lifts one foul ground right side. Out of play.
In a game characterized by defense, there's been sp splatterings of offense, and we're just waiting for that next. Benarvik waves, and he's retired. And evens the count. McElfatrick reached base on the fielder's choice back in the second inning, but since then is, hasn't quite had any luck. Too much trail on that pitch and falls outside. Two and one, the count to the shortstop. The former center fielder found a new home in the middle infield. Jim Foster, who's absent today, Missing one great game. He loves the move of Michael Patrick to short. With the count three and one now. And if he can get on board. Which he does here, that brings Ford up to the plate with one on and two out. Hit a couple weeks ago against Illinois to help Northwestern win that one in the ninth, in the bottom of the ninth. Ford's second time up with a walk-off opportunity. Outfield playing it very deep. Making sure no doubles and keeping Michael Fetrick away and could have put the house on that one that they would try to pick him off. It's been the deal all day. Throwing over to first base, keeping the runner close. So they do it again here. It worked for them against Griffin Arnone as he was the first base runner of the game and they haven't let off since. And that was on a back pick, not even from the pitcher. First pitch to Ford, outside. Yeah, too much action on that moving outside and catcher tried to bring it back in. He's been doing all day. But wasn't able to frame that one well enough. Runner goes, waving a miss on the way to second, the tag in time. Meckelfatrick's caught stealing, and that ends the 11th inning. A good jump, just a better throw, and an even better tag by Tyler Cerny. Eight, nine, and one batters due up for Indiana when we return. He swings at the first pitch, left center field, tracking back is Rustich, and it's off the wall off a hop. Getting into second is Jesse, and he's aboard with a leadoff double. Nice swing of the bat there by Hunter Jesse. It had that trailing action, moving away from the center fielder there. Rustich wasn't able to quite get there, and bounces. Might have been on the warning track or just before the warning track as you get to watch that one again there. One hops the wall. And then off the wall, thrown back in. So stand-up double there as Indiana finding some offense here to start the, tw uh, start the 12th, yeah. So now the ninth spot, Peter Ceruto. Drops down a bunt. Jesse moves up to third. And Ceruto beats out the throw from Minarovic. Everybody's safe all around, and there's runners on the corners with nobody out. And it looked like almost there was a bit of miscommunication there as the ball was just hugging that third base line. And as Grable and Minarvik, as you get it to watch it again here. Minarvik, really strong throw over to first and made a real effort there, but Ceruto was too far down the line. So two on now with the runners at the corners, as you mentioned, no outs. And Glasser, who's two for five in today's game, at the dish. Looks like there's going to be a conversation, though. The umpires coming together to talk things through. They seem they want to review it. Maybe they got an out at first. Here's the first pitch to Glasser. This is the outside part of the zone. 
mentioned that he was two for five already today. Got things started when he led off this game at the top of the first, which seemed like I've grown a full beard since then. Yeah. Five o'clock shadow is real. Liner to short, put down by Michael Fatrick. He's got a force to make it second, and that's the only play he can make. So not the worst thing. Still got an out. Just trade out that runner at first. And now you stole the potential for a double play ball, ending the ending and getting Northwestern out of the jam. Whalen, who's really struggled at the plate today, up now. One for five. Did have a single in the sixth. But has since grounded out to second base twice. Double play ball likely coming for Northwestern trying to force it. And there's a grounder back to the mound. It gets through. It's going to be a tough play to make. Going home. The ball gets away. Jesse comes in to score. Up to third is Glasser. Would have been a little bit too tough to turn at second to make a double play. Gives Indiana their first lead of the day. And after trailing all day, they were down 2 nothing. They found the runs in the eighth to tie it up. And now they take their lead. And this Indiana team is very good in, in close ball games and in clutch games. I mean, they're 7-0 and oh in one-run games, 8-2 and two in two-run games, as we mentioned earlier. Now Devin Taylor, who's one for four, helped Indiana earn the spot to even get in extra innings in the first place. And now they've got a lead. He ropes that one, just foul right side. Didn't miss Would have by scored much. probably two there. Did not miss by much. Just a tiny bit out in front of it. He's just a millisecond later. That's right down the first base line, getting into the corner. and Probably a stand-up double for him. For the third consecutive batter, we have runners on the corners. Still one out here in the top of the 12th. Northwestern started scoring in the second inning, added one on in the fifth, what was thought to be an insurance run before Indiana played a two in the eighth inning. And now have taken the lead here in the top of the 12th. Devin Taylor with an 0-1 count. Against Ben Grable. Strike two. Grable's got to make sure this one doesn't get out of hand because one run is surmountable. But as soon as you give up another one or even three, it becomes tougher and tougher with obviously only Northwestern working with three outs. No balls, two strikes, one out. Foul ball. And even in a game where Devin Taylor hasn't necessarily had the, the best day at the at the dish, you can really still feel his impact. You know, scored the, the tying run in the eighth. He's made some really nice plays. Such a talented player for this Indiana team. He's doing a good job staying alive in this at bat. Third fouled ball of this plate appearance. Indiana three, Northwestern two. Runner goes from first, but it's fouled off and kind of knocks Cooper Ford, the catcher, a little bit woozy. Yeah, just, just a weird ricochet of the chest protector, knocked him off balance. He's good to go, though. Got him in the backswing. The 0-2 again, but a pickoff move to first. Both runners head back. Philip Glasser is at third. Bobby Whalen's at second. Or at first, rather. You're right. It's been a while. I was looking over at second. I was like, yeah, there's, there's nobody there. there. Taylor unloads into left center. That's into the gap all the way to the wall. One run scores. 
Here comes a second. Taylor stays on his feet this time, and two more come in. Indiana's got insurance in the 12th. How about that from Devin Taylor? Going the opposite way, pushing that ball out into left center and gets to the wall. Just a good piece of hitting. So you see another shot of it there. It's all the way back, just dies in the corner. Rustich fires it in, but it's too, too late. So Indiana puts up two more on the board. It's 5-2 now. Exactly what you couldn't afford to happen. Trailing, or trailing one run, now you've made the problem bigger and now it's a three run deficit for Northwestern and only adds to a level of difficulty of trying to get back into it in the bottom half of this inning. Northwestern hasn't scored since the fifth inning when they took a two nothing lead over the Hoosiers. It's been a good pitcher's duel for a majority of this game. Sam Garwal had a great start, but he won't be involved in the decision now. Sadi Manasse started things for Indiana, went once through the order before turning things over. It's Ryan Kraft, who's been phenomenal, and it looks like Devin Taylor's being lifted for a pinch runner. The Morgan Kalapi comes in at second. Kalapi, rather. Colopy is a lot faster than the powerful frame that Taylor presents. And a chopper to third, Minarovic on two hops. A couple shuffles over to first in time, second out. Good job by Minarovic there to just settle himself down with those shuffles and then that strong throw over to first because that's, that's, that's a difficult play to make. comes Matheson, still without a hit after providing all the offense yesterday for the Hoosiers with those four RBIs, the home run in the first inning to open the scoring yesterday. But he's been quiet today. Strike one on the outer half. Matheson, we've been hyping up all morning. What is he going to do today after providing all Indiana's offense yesterday? And he's been quiet, but his team has really come through for him. Just passing the baton, and he earns another opportunity. So for three today with a couple at bat cancelers. He unloads this one foul ground towards Northwestern's bullpen and out of play. Ben Grable has gone in for a lot of work now, 72 pitches out of relief. There's still another game to play tomorrow. Coach Jim Foster will be back for that one. The 0-2 from Grable inside. If you're Grable, you just have to get out of the inning at this point. Can't afford another Indiana run. One strike away from doing so and giving Ford, Ferrer, and Livermore a shot. This one's knocked down well by Ford. Yeah, it looked kind of awkward, that delivery there, and just threw it into the ground almost. Good block by Ford to stop the runner from advancing. Got to figure this is going to be Grable's last inning no matter what. Four and a third so far and especially with the action in the bullpen. But Indiana just won't go down. So many foul balls extending these at bats, upping pitch counts. Grable nearing 80 pitches out of the bullpen. Leading off at second is Colopy taking over for Devin Taylor. Two two to Matheson. Bounces in, counts full. It's the second time that 
he's bounced a pitch in this at bat. Wondering if that's a tiredness thing or just a, as you know, the, that pitch count goes up. Pitch number seven of this at bat. Full count, two outs, foul ball. So good at bat here by Carter Matheson. Who's, you know, he's, he's struggled today and he's he's reached on, on an intentional walk and a hit by pitch. But this is a good confident at bat from him, staying alive, staying in the count, and working it to full. A two out walk puts Matheson aboard. And that will be the day for Ben Grable. They turn things over to the bullpen. Two on, two out. When we return, we have a new pitcher. Coming in for pinch running on, David, on Devin Taylor, who doubled in two to add insurance to Indiana. First pitch for Mutagawa was a strike. Matheson is just 0 for 3 with a couple walks and a hit by pitch. Pine singled in the seventh. His only action on the bases. And he fouls one back. Go down 0 and 2. Seemingly just the Josh Pine mantra in this game. It's just foul back balls. I mean, it's kind of been that for Indiana all day long, but Pine's had a couple at bats that have gone over five or six pitches just with kind of his decision making at the plate. And ability to foul balls back. One and two. That one was a little high for Mutagawa. Infield playing rather deep except the first baseman Markinson. Standard depth. One, two. On the ground to second. Livermore to second base gets the force. And that'll do things for the top half of the 12th inning. Northwestern's got a lot of work to do if they want to stay in it. They trail by three. Forward, Ferrer and Livermore do up for the Cats. Third save of the year. He's already got two with the three runs. Makes this a save opportunity. First pitch to Cooper Ford is a strike. Ford today three for four with two singles and a double. And he's got an 0 and 2 count. Kevin Ferrer behind him. Ford stays alive. Two is poked up, foul ground, and into the bullpen. Just out of reach of Tibbetts. Yeah, he's just trying to kind of steal that one, keep it in the ballpark. Normally you think about that as, you know, snagging a home run, but he's trying to get that foul ball over the fence. No balls, two strikes again. Chopper to third. Reading it well is Pine. Zipping it to first, out number one. Three home runs this season for the left fielder today. And it's an even count. Three hours and 30 minutes have now gone by. In a game that was on pace to end in two hours and 20 minutes. Who doesn't love more free baseball? Little, little late inning magic put together by Indiana as well as some extra inning heroics from Devin Taylor. Put them in position to win this game, but still gonna get two more outs. Make that one. Northwestern down to their last gasp. And it's gonna be Tony Livermore 
at the plate. He waves strike two. Northwestern's down to their final strike. Needing a lot to happen here as they trail by three in the 12th. They led this game 2-0. And now this game is over. In the history books, Indiana completes the comeback. Winning it 5-2 in 12. They have won this series now. Game three will be tomorrow.